This is Paw Print, an animal rescue community, episode 117. I'm Nancy Ree. And I'm Harold Ree. Today's guest is the talented Irit Bloom, positive reinforcement animal trainer. Irit Bloom is an animal trainer in the Southern California area. Her business is called The Sophisticated Dog, and her episodes have been some of our most requested ever since we started Paw Print, the animal rescue podcast. Today, we address an issue that maybe some of you run into, which is your dog refuses to eat, not due to health reasons, but due to a variety of other issues that they may be having. Dorit covers all this in thorough detail, as she usually does, and we use our own dog, Nacho, as an example. If you want to learn more about Dorit Bloom, Go to our show notes at thisispawprint.com slash 117. That's the number 117. He's afraid of the bowl. You put the food in the bowl. He starts barking. He looks at you as if to say, are you going to let me eat? Okay. And I have never seen this before. So essentially what I do, which is I would definitely say is not positive reinforcement, I'll literally just tell him, Nacho, just eat your food. And he will eat his food for uh, a moment. I literally stand right next to him so that my body is touching his, like maybe my foot or my leg is touching his, and then he'll eat. A couple things. Um, And again, because I actually have the person who's asking the question on the other end of the phone, I'm going to ask specific questions. What kind of food bowl does he have? Is it ceramic? Is it metal? What does it look like? Right. It's a ceramic bowl, maybe let's say six, six, seven inches in diameter. Uh, It's on one of those little metallic stands. So it's slightly towards, you know, a little bit higher up. So it's, he doesn't have to actually go all the way down to the ground to eat his food. And yeah, that's about it. Okay, so the fact that it's not metal takes away one of my first suggestions because mm. sometimes dogs get really nervous about metal bowls. Mm. But it's ceramic. Is it very shiny? Beige and with a black details, you know, little little paw prints and uh, little little details around the edge, but n- nothing nothing shiny. Okay, it sounds cute, actually. Yeah. Um, okay, so what I'm going to say is this is one of those situations where sometimes the easiest solution is to make a change to the picture that the dog first sees. Because right now what's going on is he won't eat, and and I know you're looking at it as sort of a punishing thing that you're, when you're saying to him, Nacho, just eat. But it's possible that that you saying just eat makes him actually feel better about the situation and you're actually reinforcing him eating. It's sort of backwards, but you're encouraging him to eat and he's viewing that as a, is what I actually mean, encouraging him to eat. And he's viewing it as a positive, not a negative. So I wouldn't feel bad about what you're doing. It's possible that he says, oh, this is great. My human is giving me specific permission. Why Nacho thinks he needs specific permission all of a sudden? I don't know. But you know, what we have right now is a dog who won't eat unless you encourage him to eat. And I see that a lot. So There's a couple of different options. So I'm going to start with the ones that I think will be easier to do and hopefully will take care of it. So the first thing is one option is to simply literally change the food bowl and see if the same thing happens with a different food bowl. So get one that is not similar. Get it, you know, a little bigger, a little smaller, a very distinct change in color. So dark instead of light. Um, that sort of thing, maybe plain instead of having a pattern, because it sounds like it's got, you know, a fair amount of pattern on it and see if just doing that changes the behavior. It's possible that it will. It's possible that it won't take the bowl off the stand and see if that makes a difference. Hmm. So the first thing, so this is all sort of, uh, for lack of a better word, it's low hanging fruit. We're going to, we're going to try the stuff that's going to require the least effort basically, and see if those things work. Because I'm all for solving a problem easily and not having it be a big issue that takes a lot of time to take care of. We're we're all always looking for the efficient solution. So that's what I'll call it. I'll say I'm I'm all about being efficient. That's That's what it is. Um, So another option, if taking the food off of the stand or changing the bowl doesn't do the trick, then another option is to try a food toy instead of a bowl. And what I mean by a food toy is, you know, something like a Kong, if you're familiar with those, those are little, you know, rubber 
toys that you can stuff food into. Right, right. Or like a buster cube. I don't know if you're feeding kibble or canned or raw or what you're feeding. Right. In our case, it's, it's dry food. So dry food you can put like in something like a Buster Cube or Kong makes this great thing called the Kong Wobbler, which makes a ton of noise on hard surfaces, but the dogs love it. Mm. Um, or the little tiny Kong toys, which you stuff full of food and then you plug the ends with something like peanut butter or a little bit of canned food or something. And then there's no bowl to begin with to bark at. Mm. So you can at least get the bowl out of the picture either by changing the bowl taking it off of the little food bowl stand or going to a food toy where there's really no bowl at all. So you can sort of slowly figure out, is it the shape of the bowl? Is it the presentation of food in the bowl? If a food toy solves it and changing food bowls did not solve it, then maybe it was something about the food being in that kind of receptacle. Mm. Um, If taking it off of the feeder solves it, then maybe it was something about the height that it's sitting at. But if, None of those options work. If you still get this, it's food, and I don't know what I'm supposed to do because you're supposed to encourage me to eat it, and if you don't encourage me to eat it, I'm not going to eat it. You have a couple of options. One main option is to stand there silently because your presence seems to be helpful, and then you're going to slowly fade your, yourself out of the picture where you'll leave some of the time while he's eating and come back to check on him. So instead of having to stand there for five minutes, you stand there for about a minute. When you see he starts eating, you walk away. Then you come back and see if he's continued eating. If he actually starts to bark at the food bowl, I would walk away entirely. I would say, okay, you're barking at the food bowl. This is not the game we play. I'm just leaving. Because I feel like maybe part of what's going on is he's saying, this is great. I get Harold's undivided attention for five minutes while I'm eating. And there are three dogs in the household, and I don't always get my alone time, and this is my alone time, right. if, if you know what I mean. There are times that I'll, I'll ask Nancy, I'll say, did Nacho eat this morning? Because there's still food in his bowl, like, you know, maybe I'm at work or something like that. So it's, it, it, maybe there is something to it, but sometimes he will skip the entire day without food, which is amazing to me. Uh, I just don't know how, how he does it, but... <laughs> well, that's a really interesting point you just raised, because... Dogs, while they are certainly not wolves, and we have domesticated them and changed the way that their systems work in a lot of different aspects, you know, they're, they're really not wolves. If they were wolves, we wouldn't put them on sheep. You know, that would just be a bad <laughs> idea. But in some ways, they still have that carnivorous system. And one of the things that means is that dogs can actually skip meals and be fine. Most carnivores don't get to eat every day. You know, if you're a lion, you don't get to find a gazelle and actually catch a gazelle every day. So when you do eat, you feast. And then when you can't find a gazelle, you hang out and sleep mostly if you're a lion, as far as I can tell. Um, But dogs can plug into that sort of carnivorous part of them, if you will by skipping meals and being completely fine about it. So one option is to just say, okay, you, you bark at your bowl. I'm going to walk. I've, I've already tried. I'm changing the bowl. I've put it on the ground. I've tried a food toy and you're not eating no matter what I try. Fine. I'm going to leave you alone with this thing for half an hour. You have half an hour to finish your food. And if you don't, I'm picking it up. And the next time you get to see food is at your next meal. And you can do that for, honestly, two or three days without ill effects in a dog who's six or seven years old. If he Mm. were a, you know, a 10 or 14 year old dog, I'd be a little more hesitant about this. But a dog who's in decent health and sort of in the prime of his life should be completely fine skipping meals. And maybe he'll get hungry enough that he'll just eat without your help. Now, having said that, if he has like kidney issues or any kind of liver malfunction or any other metabolic issues that you know about skipping meals is not a good idea and you shouldn't try this. Sure, sure. But it's the kind of thing where I would literally just call up the vet and say, hey, is it okay if Nacho doesn't eat for a day or two because he's being really picky about his food? And your vet will probably say, it's totally fine. Hmm. Um, Other options, change the food 
or change the style of food. So maybe he really just is sick of this particular flavor of dry food, or maybe he doesn't like dry food because of the way it feels on his teeth. It is possible, this reminds me as I say this, that he's got a dental issue mm. and when he eats, his teeth hurt. And so he doesn't want to eat. Fascinating. Okay. Fascinating. So that's another option right. is you can, you can say, okay, let me try a different, let me try soft food instead of hard food and see if he eats without hesitation. Right. Then you can start to ask, is it because it's tastier or is it because it's softer? And all of these things can sort of help you figure out possible solutions to the issue. So I'm going to let me just recap because we went through a lot of different things. So That's to right. recap, the first thing I would do is just try it, literally just try a different food bowl. Ideally, it would be a slightly different size and a very different color. If that doesn't work, try putting the bowl on the ground instead of in the feeder and see if that works. If that doesn't work, try a food toy. In the meantime, regardless of what kind of feeding station you're using, don't play into the, now I'm looking to you for help. As soon as he starts barking at his food, leave the area. If he leaves with you, that's fine. Just leave the food sitting down there for 30 minutes, give him 30 minutes, and after 30 minutes, pick it up. Remember that if he skips meals, it's not the end of the world unless there's some kind of metabolic issue or, or you know, something else going on that's a serious ailment, um, as long as it's only for a couple of days. I mean, if he doesn't eat for a week, then you really do have a problem. But he's going to get hungry enough to eat after a day or two of skipping meals. And I'll say one other thing is some dogs just eat less than other dogs, just like people eat less than other people, depending on the person. And there's one other thing that might be a factor, and that's whether the dogs are all fed in the same area and everyone has access to each other's food. So let me just quickly ask you that. Does everyone have access to each other's food so, or are the dogs separated? Yeah, I, 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 we basically have a living room downstairs. Lego and Nacho, their bowls are fairly close to each other in like a laundry room slash hot water heater room. Uh, and so maybe six feet apart. Uh, Evie's bowl is near the fireplace. So she's maybe about 15, 12 to 15 feet away. And then if we have foster dogs, we'll, it, it just it just depends. The foster dog or dogs tend to settle into a certain spot. It might be the far end of the kitchen. Uh, could sometimes actually be pretty close to Nacho. Um, another factor, which I don't know if this makes any difference. Maybe it makes a huge difference, and I should have told you this. Nacho's bowl traditionally has always been near the doggy door. I don't know why we, huh. we decided that. And for a while, we were even wondering, hmm, maybe Nacho's just freaking out that a dog might come through that doggy door, which even though the doggy door is closed, we sometimes have the suspicion maybe he had had a bad experience <laughs> with a dog running through the door as he was eating. Uh, don't, you know, d at this point, have no proof of it, but. Right. And actually, so, so that it, it's interesting, as you said, it's near the dog door. I thought, hmm, has someone run through the dog door while he was eating? So I think that's actually very likely that there's some history of something that you're not aware of. Another possibility, if it's not necessarily the position by the dog door, another possibility is that one of the other dogs is giving him the eye while he's mm. eating mm. and sort of saying, you know, if you leave that, I get to have it. I have a I have a client who has two dogs, one of whom is way more into food than the other. And they had this interesting when the dog, this, these are two dogs who were introduced to the household at different times. And when the second dog came into the household, there was this interesting issue with their feeding until the owner figured out that the new dog was eyeballing the previous, you know, the, the existing dog's food. And so he was getting too nervous to eat. So once we separated their food areas, it wasn't an issue. So I do think maybe feeding literally in another room, again, as an experiment. So we're changing the picture with things like, you know, so the first changing the picture will be 
take his bowl and put it in a completely different room where the other dogs are not with him and see if that makes a difference. Mm. Or switch his position with one of the other dogs so that one of the other dogs is near the dog door and he's where one of the other dogs used to be eating and see if just that solves it. So I would definitely play with the where is the food bowl with one option being just let's get it away from the doggy door and another option being let's get it away from the other dogs. And for that, you'd probably need to be feeding in another room. In case you're wondering, we did three things based on our conversation with Arit to change Nacho's eating environment. One, we moved his bowl much further away from the doggy door. Number two, we've spread out the dog bowls for Nacho, Lego, and Evie, our three dogs, further away, so they're at least 10 feet apart from each other. And number three, we've introduced some great tasting wet food into the mix, which gets all three dogs excited, but also quiets them down as they're eating away at the delicious food. As always, we want to say thank you to Arit Bloom for sharing her amazing knowledge. If you want to learn more about Arit Bloom and the sophisticated dog, go to our show notes at thisispawprint.com slash 117. If you'd like to meet me or Nancy on social media, Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, we're almost at a thousand Instagram followers. Simply look for This Is Paw Print, all one word. If you want to listen to more episodes of Paw Print, you can find us on your favorite podcast player, such as Apple Podcasts, also known as iTunes, SoundCloud, and Pocket Casts. Search for Paw Print Animal Rescue and make sure to hit subscribe to get the latest episodes immediately. Stay tuned next time for another great episode with Irit Bloom, positive reinforcement dog trainer. She addresses the timely topic, how much do I need to show my dog that I'm the boss? That'll be on our next episode. We just want to say thank you to all of you for sharing paw print with your friends and family. We've been listened to in over 120 countries and territories, and we couldn't have done it without you. So thanks. And remember, you spread a positive message of love and peace by saving an animal. Have a great day, everyone. And see you next time on Paw Print. Paw Print is a production of EVER Education. You can't handle the truth.